Russia and its invasion of Ukraine tops our show this morning. Members of the U.S. Embassy are back in Ukraine for the first time in two months. They tweeted out these pictures from Lviv as they took their first day trip uh, into the country from Poland. It's the first step ahead of more regular travel as they prepared to reopen the embassy in Kyiv in the coming weeks, which is a really big symbolic move. And news that just broke on our air last hour. The White House says U.S. Marine Corps veteran Trevor Reed has been released from a Russian prison and is on his way back to the United States. U.S. and Russian officials say that Reed's release was part of a prisoner swap in exchange for a convicted drug trafficker serving time in Connecticut. In a statement, President Biden said, quote, the negotiations that allowed us to bring Trevor home required difficult decisions that I do not take lightly. Reed's parents, who met with Biden in March, said the president's actions likely saved their son's life. So incredible that this type of thing happened happened, Joe, in the middle of a hot war with Ukraine. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and I will say anytime the United States and Russian officials uh, are talking, that is good news. Obviously, great mm -hmm. news for this Marine, uh, uh, but, 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 but also just good news in general. Of course, you have a WNBA star still uh, in prison there. Let's hope we get some movement on that. Let's bring in right now spokesman for the U.S. State Department, Ned Price. Uh, Ned, let me let me ask you a, a quick question here. We, we have front page of The New York Times talking about how the United States is pushing allies uh, for Ukraine arms as war escalates and talks about the critical shift, Germany getting involved. But then here on the front page of, of The Wall Street Journal, you have Russia says NATO is fighting proxy war with rising risks. Uh, we're hearing once again uh, the talk of nuclear escalation uh, by by Lavrov. Uh, should we be concerned uh, or is this just more saber rattling by the Russians? Well, Joe, we've heard a lot of bluster, a lot of propaganda, a lot of bravado coming from uh, the Kremlin. I think in this case, it has to be uh, the height of irony to hear the Russians claim that anyone else is responsible for escalation in a war they started, in a war they are waging, in a war in which they are brutalizing uh, the people of Ukraine. Uh, I think we're hearing this from the Russians, and we've heard similar statements from the Russians for some time now, uh, primarily for one reason. Uh, it is a means to distract. It's a means to distract from the fact that their war effort in Ukraine is failing. It's a means to distract from the fact that they've lost the battle from of Kyiv. Uh, it is a means to distract from the fact that their economy is in shambles, their financial system is in ruins. President Putin is a pariah on the world stage. Russia is diplomatically isolated uh, like it never has been uh, before. But of course, every time we hear statements from the Kremlin, including statements that are incredibly irresponsible, uh, like some of these, uh, we pay attention. Uh, we do our own analysis. We watch very closely. Ultimately, what matters most to us uh, is what the Russians do, not what they say. Uh, so we're watching very closely. If there is a need uh, for us to undertake any different contingency planning, to do any different type of work, uh, we're prepared to do that. Ned, are we further away from a negotiated settlement than ever? Well, we've never been close to one, unfortunately. Uh, and the fact is that our Ukrainian partners have sought to negotiate in good faith. They are committed to finding a resolution through, to this through diplomacy and dialogue. There are other partners we have around the world, our Turkish allies, our German allies, our French allies, our Israeli partners, uh, others. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we haven't seen that same commitment from Russia at every turn. Uh, we've seen the Russians, when they have chosen to engage, uh, engage with a little more in mind uh, than and offering the pretense, the pretense of the fact uh, that they uh, want the world to think uh, that they're engaged diplomatically, that they're engaged in good faith conversations. We haven't uh, seen that yet. And so unfortunately, we're nowhere near uh, such an outcome. Ned, it's Katty here. There's been some criticism of the UN Secretary General's visit to Moscow yesterday and questions about why he didn't go to Ukraine first and then perhaps go and see Vladimir Putin and push him harder on things like Bucha. I, I appreciate you're speaking from the State Department, but the US is an important player at the United Nations. You're on the UN Security Council. Have you been disappointed by the role that the United Nations has played so far in this conflict? Could the global body be stepping up and doing more? 
Well, we're supportive of every diplomatic effort that is done in full coordination with our Ukrainian partners. Ultimately, uh, this is going to have to be diplomacy uh, in which, for which uh, our Ukrainian partners are in the driver's seat. No one else is going to be able to make the decisions, to make the calls uh, that President Zelensky, on behalf of his people, uh, is going to have to make. When it comes to the UN, Secretary Blinken had a conversation with the UN Secretary General on Friday. Uh, and what he uh, conveyed to the UN Secretary General uh, was uh, our expectation, the world's expectation, uh, that the message the Secretary General uh, would deliver to President Putin uh, was the same one that President Putin has been hearing from the United States, has been hearing from NATO, uh, has been hearing from uh, the vast majority of the world's countries. It's a message that this um, aggression must come to an end. It's an aggression that this, that this war uh, is unprovoked, is uh, unnecessary, uh, and is uh, contrary uh, to Russia's interests as well. Uh, so I understand that the Secretary General is going to uh, go to Kiev. There will be consultations there. Uh, we, again, are open and we are uh, supportive of any diplomatic effort that is done in full consultation with Kiev. Hey, good morning, Ned. It's uh, Jonathan Lemire. There's pretty significant escalation in the last uh, few hours as Russia, Gazprom, uh, announced that it's going to be cutting off supplies uh, of fuel, of oil, gas to Poland uh, and Bulgaria, two European nations, part of the coalition there. Uh, can you get your reaction to that? And also, how important is it that, that Europe wean itself off of Russian fuel? So in many ways, this isn't a surprise, John, because Russia has done this repeatedly before. They've weaponized energy over the course of years, and there's probably no better case uh, than the case of Ukraine. So this is something we've prepared for. We prepared for it in the short term, and we're preparing for it uh, in the longer term. In the short term, we're surging supplies of oil, of LNG, uh, to our European allies and partners. As you know, we've undertaken uh, a release from our own strategic petroleum reserves. We've organized with countries around the world a coordinated release uh, from strategic petroleum reserves to ensure that there is uh, adequate energy supplies to stabilize markets and to provide our European allies and others uh, with what they need. Uh, that's in the short term. And in the short term, uh, of course, we are emerging from a very cold winter. Uh, we're now in the spring. Uh, temperatures are changing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing when it comes to uh, Europe's ability to weather this. But we're also preparing for the longer term. Uh, we are working with our European allies and partners, as well as others, uh, to transition away uh, from from Russian uh, sources of energy, uh, and ultimately tra to transition away from fossil fuels entirely, uh, and to uh, continue this transition uh, to renewable, to sources of energy uh, that will see to it uh, that neither the United States nor any country around the world uh, is held held hostage to a country like uh, Russia, uh, who can close the spigot uh, whenever they so choose. Uh, um it's Mika here. I'm just curious. Russia has brought up nukes again. What's the United States response? Well, again, talk of nuclear weapons, loose talk of uh, nuclear exchange, that's the height uh, of irresponsibility. It also contravenes what we've heard from the Russian Federation, not only over the course of years, dating back to the Cold War, uh, but even earlier this year when the Russians again confirmed uh, the longstanding maxim that a nuclear war uh, must never be fought and can never be won. Uh, that is something that we profoundly believe in. It's something that the international community profoundly uh, believes in. But like I said before, Mika, we are going to take a close look at what the Russians actually do. We are constantly assessing their nuclear posture. Uh, at this point, we've determined there is no need for us to change our own nuclear posture, uh, but we're going to continue to watch very closely. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us, Ned, about the prisoner swap? Well, this is a testament to the commitment on the part of President Biden and this entire administration uh, to bring home Americans who are unjustly detained around the world. Trevor Reed, uh, a Marine who has been held in Russia, who had been held in Russia uh, for nearly two years, is now on his way home. Our special presidential envoy for hostage affairs, Ambassador Roger Karstens, uh, was able to meet him. Uh, Trevor is in good spirits. Uh, he is relieved to be heading home to his parents. Uh, they'll be home uh, later today. This was something that developed uh, over the course of months. Uh, and I mentioned before Roger Karstens, he has uh, a long title, but there's one key word in his title. He's a special presidential envoy for hostage affairs. And so when Roger Karstens and his, teams, and his team uh, engage with other countries, they are doing so uh, with one goal and only one goal in mind, and that is the safe return of Americans who are held hostage or otherwise unjustly or wrongfully detained uh, around the world. Uh, this was not 
not part of a broader discussion with the Russian Federation. We didn't seek that. We aren't uh, seeking that. It was about one thing and one thing only, the safe release of Trevor. Uh, and that's something we were able to accomplish today at long last. All right. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price, thank you very much for joining us this morning.